Hey Scotty, I just reinstalled Fallout 3 with all of the freaking mods. Would you like to play with me? Ooh, that is much better. Yeah, I can put this down for a while. Hello everyone and welcome to another one of our Lazy Swim Deck Reviews, a series where Scotty and I take the time to go through the pre-con decks, read out the cards inside, give you an idea of how strong they are and if they synergize with the given commander, the cast to the deck and how good a product is straight out of the box. At the end, we score each deck inside of an expansion against each other out of 10, so grab your favorite drink, sit down, lay back and relax as we dive into this review and I am your host Vlad, thank you very much Scotty for the intro. Two reviews, Crappy Survivors. This is gonna be an interesting one. This is a Naya Commander deck with Dog Meat, Ever Loyal. One of the companions you can get in Fallout, Fallout 3, if I'm not mistaken. I might be in Fallout 4, but I've not played that game. So yeah, we've been on a roll. This is the last of the decks so far. I think there are quite a good amount of fun things you can do with some of the decks and of course as usual it tends to be that some decks shine over others in certain aspects and mutant mana seems to be the one overall that has uh, the more fun and also strength and synergy and uh, yeah hail caesar as well uh, following that one uh, straight after because of how good it can just go to the face now this one is going to be scrappy survivor so without further ado let's have a look it has 38 new cards great thing i love these decks with new cards uh, instead of the usual 10 or 15 the deck box the 10 double sided token cards the foil edge display commander life wheel the strategy insert the reference card and of course you get the collector booster sample pack yeah we're pretty excited about these uh we might be a little bit far behind with the, the curve on these videos and overall on most of our videos that is because we made for you a wonderful car marketplace that is uk exclusive for all of the players out there so if you're interested we'll leave a link into the description down below to our car marketplace very friendly sharks it's been a labor of love and we hope you can enjoy it and we also have a community there you can hop on our discord and say hello you don't have to buy or sell you can just come and say hello if you're a fan of the youtube channel anyway this is the deck box i love this picture of dog meat it's really really cool i hope that shines through it's really really nice and then we have the insert strategy insert that i think it's always very nice especially if you've never bought these kind of decks before and you know imagine you're a kid the first time around you get given one of these decks you get a little bit more of a reading value and understanding about what the deck is about a little bit of fluff a little bit of the commander rules and a little bit about everything else so that's really really nice quite quite beautiful and i love the doggo of course this might be my favorite one just because i love dogs but let's not have that influence the final score i hope <laughs> i'm joking of course it won't influence the final score so where first first what are we doing first let's look at these this is the beautiful life counters and now let's look at a collector booster sample pack see what we get inside in general now okay so the first card is helios one so this is the energy deck version so that's not, not a bad one and then we get masterwork of ingenuity which is an equipment uh, card so masterwork of ingenuity is one generic as an artifact and equipment you may have it enter the battlefield as a copy of any equipment and to the battlefield so we've not seen the masterwork but we've seen the helios one card so then let's have a look at the commander proper and the tokens of the deck as usual we analyze the deck with the given commander so this is going to be analyzed around dog meat and we see how good all the cards synergize with dog meat itself not the general of the deck the commander is a 3-3 dog that costs naya and when it enters the battlefield mill five cards and then return an aura an equipment card from your graveyard to your hand so milling that's one big card thing because you're not just going to war two or three you're milling five and then you're returning both our and equipment so you're playing around auras and equipments out of the graveyard so this is an, an interesting spin out of this one uh, for sure and then whenever you control mm, uh, whenever creature you control that's enchanted or, or equipped so the aura or equipment you create a jank token so whenever they attack our um 
infantry control or equipped attacks. Yeah, so whenever they attack. So yeah, you're caring about equipping and enchanting your own creatures, which many, many decks have the theme, but you're doing it out of the graveyard here. And there are quite a few cards that do just that. So I hope they have brought them back here. Okay, so also the junk token, in case you didn't know, you sack an artifact, with, sack this artifact, you exile top card of your library, and you can play it this turn. Uh, of course, you are showing the card that is going to be, but you know, you can always use these junk tokens if you ever need to get through your deck, or alternatively, you can use them for sack outlets for other things. And we have Settlement, which is an enchanted land. Enchanted land has add mana of any color, which I think we saw before in previous deck. Uh, treasure, food, <laughs> Nuka Cola, of course, Rad. Oh, Rad is back. So That's this rad. is Radiation, so we might see some Rads back. And then Kopi, and so on and so forth. And for the Radiation, in case you didn't know, at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, if you have any Rad counters, mail them any cards. And for each non-land card mail this way, you lose one life and a Rad counter. So that's really, really good. And uh, of course, the Rads are not there forever, but if you have five, six, seven, you're doing that in, in like the, the mutant menace one does, you have to be careful on how you mill yourself if you don't play a lot out of the graveyard. But then again, here, I'm hoping you do. So let's go on and see what happens here. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Can I find the pool tab? As usual, this is uh, the game that we play here, trying to find a pool tab because sometimes this like here seems, oh, there you go. It's hidden. Sometimes it's just not there. <laughs> You know, I know I sound like uh, Mr. Burns every time I say this, but um, hey, if you get that reference, let me know in the comments down below. Anyway, uh, Preston Garvey is a Miniman. Preston Garvey costs you a Naya, and uh, it's a human soldier. It's a 4 4 at the beginning of combat on your turn. You create a green or enchantment token in settlement attached to the top of one of target land you control. It has enchant land, and you basically tap to add one mana of any color, which is very, 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 very. Very good. And whenever it attacks, on top each enchanted permanent you control. This is a very fun spin on the enchanting theme. It's not necessarily a card that you would play as a commander. I mean, you could probably build it as a commander, but I think it's a very rigorous support to the main theme, unlike some other cards that we've seen that just don't support them in commander ability. And it allows you to mana fix. So that's always, always good. Yeah. So, and on top of that, you did the fact that whenever it attacks, which you can buff it up or defend it or and so on and so forth, you get to untap each enchanted permanent. That is really good. Effectively, hopefully giving in vigilance to almost every creature and also, well, untapping lands and so on and so forth, which is insane. Okay, so next we have the Brotherhood outcast is a 3-2 human soldiers that's wine it's called three and says battlefield you choose one return target aura or equipment card with mana value three or less for engraved to battlefield so playing out of the graveyard very nice also we gone with the uncommons first strange but okay or uh, put a shield counter on target creature so very good synergy and it's nice you either return something from the graveyard or you just get to protect a creature so that's good commander sophia the gear is a 1-3 human pilot it costs four is wine it has flash and crash landing when it enters the battlefield you destroy up to one target legendary permanent that permanent controller creates a drug token so or is it a creature but it's a removal it doesn't synergize with commander not really but it's a removal so it's okay um i will keep it of course and again if the theme is creatures you know and equip and go wide and hurt then it's always good to keep a creature as well that is also removal so acquired mutations cost three it's red and chance a creature and it gets plus two plus two and goaded and whenever the creature attacks, the defending player gets two red counters, effectively uh, making it interesting. Oh, yeah, that's why it's so weird, because these cards, for some reason, were upside down. <laughs> well, there you go. Um, so, yeah, it's interesting. You get rack, uh, rack counters to your uh, opponents, which is really nice. And um, you get rid of a creature that's annoying you. And yeah, it's not bad. On top of that, if it goes back into your graveyard, you can always pull it back onto another creature. So no man, um, it's not the greatest, but it's not bad at all. Goading is really, really cool, especially if they have some really strong creatures. Okay, Cosworth, Handy Helper is a 2-3 robot that costs three is wine. That's legendary artifacts as well. Commander is you control have war two 
Okay, that's cool. And then tap uh, two white, spend this mana only to cast or an equipment spells. Very good ramp. Very, very good. Two white is really, really good. And then attach target or, or equipment you control to target creature you control. Wow, that is really, really good. This is a strong card. And, and the color combinations as well. You have a lot of very strong artifact and equipment. So that is extremely strong. Then we get Idolize, which is an enchantment aura. Cost two is white and enchants a creature. And the creature has whenever this creature attacks alone. It gets plus X plus X until the end of turn, where X is a number of non land permanents you control. Uh, that can be really, really strong if you have a creature with trample or so on and so forth. So, yeah, not bad at all. Then we get pre war form aware. Cost three, it's white. And when it enters the battlefield, return tank a creature card with mana value three or less from the graveyard to the battlefield. Because remember, you're milling top five cards of your deck with your commander. So, creature cards will go into the graveyard as well and um attach pre-war formal work to it and then it gets plus two plus two and has vigilance so that's another good good way to well interact with the graveyard and i like that now we have vault 101 birthday party cost four it's white it's a saga with three steps the first one create a one one white soldier human token and create the food token okay cool and then on the second third you may put an iron equipment card from your hand or graveyard onto the battlefield very good i like this ball saga much more than a lot of the other ones if an equipment is put onto the battlefield this way you may attach to target creature you control wow very very strong in this deck absolutely Great. Duchess Wayward Tavern Keep is a 4 3 human citizen, costs 4, and has hunters for hire. It's legendary. Whenever a creature you control this combat damage to a player, put a quest counter on. So that's that. They can be done, um, you know, as the game progresses, that's gonna be harder and harder to do, but it can definitely be done. And then for one generic, move a quest kind of from any permanent control. And I like that it's from any permanent. So for any creature that you get to put a quest counter on, it doesn't necessarily have to be her because that's a problem. If the one dies with all the counters, then it's kind of pointless and you create a junk token. So more interaction with the junk. Um, yeah, I, I will say that it doesn't necessarily, it's a, in between, it synergizes with the junk part. And um, at the moment we don't have anything that makes use of the junk other than just you know using the junk token for its ability but uh we'll see how it goes then we have green reaper sprint because an enchantment R costs five it's red morbid this spell costs three generic classic as if it creature died this turn that's really good and then in chance a creature and in when it enters battlefield untap each creature you control if it's a main phase well, there's an additional combat phase after this one oh Okay, and Enchanted Creature gets plus two plus two and has haste, therefore giving you an extra Enchanted. That's very, very good. And the costs, don't fool yourself. I mean, if you have cards like this one or others that you bring it back into play, if you do it at the right time, that's really, really, really strong. So very much love that. Then we get Jump Jet. It's an equipment, it costs two, it's red, and it's an artifact, it costs one to equip. When it's this battlefield, we create a junk token. And then for three sack, another artifact, which can be any other junk tokens. So that's that's one way to use them and a double equip creatures power until the end of turn very very good makes synergy i like it megaton's fate it's cost six and it's red choose one disarm destroy target artifact create four treasure tokens or detonate which megaton's fate deals eight damage to each creature and each player gets four rat counters Okay, so that's interesting. It's um, board wide for six, so most of the times, and each player gets four rat counters is a bit annoying uh, for everybody, uh, but yourself, you are actually going to get make use of this, so that's very good. And it's hinting at Megaton's fate, which is either you disarm it, uh, because Megaton's is, in case you didn't know, uh, one of the first city settlements, it's the first settlement actually you encounter when you leave Vault 101 in Fallout 3, and uh, it's called Megaton because it literally has an atomic bomb in the middle of the city <laughs> laying in the ground and you have the ability to either try and disarm it if you have the right skill so you can do that or if you don't well it detonates or you can also choose to automatically detonate it and blow everybody up so hey that's it um i like it it's very flavorful I think it's a decent board one. There are betters, but at the same time, you can also create treasure tokens out of this. So yeah, and it's good. It's good. It's I will say it's good. It's not the best, but it's good. So yeah, you can keep it. But if you have better board wipes, that's not bad to remove. Um, okay, Vault 21 House Gambit. It costs, it's another saga. Whoop. Cost two, it's red. Discard a card and draw a card. So you get to rummage twice. And then for the third step, reveal up to five 
five non land cards from your hand for each of those cards that has the same mana value as another card revealed this way and create a treasure token okay so that's not bad if done at the right time this could be quite significantly uh, good it could be could be quite quite good but if not it's kind of meh so yeah you can you can kind of fix your your hand with this but it's not necessarily something i would keep veronica dissonance crime is a 3-3 human artifice a rogue that costs three it's red has menace it's a legendary creature and whenever it attacks you may discard a card again you can ramage and when you discard one or more no land cards for the first time each turn you create a junk token so you ramage and create more junk tokens i'll leave it as yes it interacts because it allows you to create junk tokens and maybe i could put um well actually let's put it in the middle because yeah junk tokens only is here okay and it's not necessarily a continuous synergy with dog me because it's just creating more of the tokens but we've only seen one card that can make real use of those tokens and now we have animal friend costs two i don't know if that's a friend to be fair <laughs> the guy doesn't look too happy but I don't know. Okay, so it costs two. It's green. It's an enchantment aura. Enchanted creature, and whenever this creature attacks, you create a 1 1 green squirrel creature token and put a plus one plus one counter on that token for each aura and equipment attached to this creature other than animal friend. Wow, so that is really, really good. You create an army of squirrels and it's very much um, dependent upon the fact that you need to have equipment. So you, I don't know if it will go necessarily on a squirrel deck, but it's pretty cool and you get to create more tokens. So not bad. Oh, and that's another enchantment arm. It's called Strong Back. It costs, is that a little bomb? Yeah, I think it's a small nuke. It costs three, it's green and you can enchant a creature Equip abilities you activate to target and China creature cost three less to activate. Great. Uh, aura spells also cost three less to uh, enchant the creature and then each other creature gets plus two plus two for each aura equipment attached to it very 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 strong that i will keep almost perfect the enchantment aura with the power armor it costs six wow that is a lot so we have celestine in the cost and enchanted creature gets power base and toughness of nine ten and has indestructible that's very good it's uh almost perfect because it's missing of course trample but that is very good and uh, i mean see the thing is the way that i see enchantments and equipment decks is small things do a lot of stuff much quicker and you can grow yourself exponentially so much faster than your opponents it's great to maybe keep one top ender like this but it's not buffing the whole board it's just buffing one creature so maybe this would be something to swap out if you're going that other route next we have army paladin which is a 3-3 human knight that costs three boars in the cost and trample and whenever you cast an aura equipment spell exile the top card of your library you may play that card until the end of the next turn again if this synergizes with the commander you gotta be careful on how many times you exile the top card of your library because you gotta play it so you have to have the mana to play it and on top of that you're playing with well the first card always discovered so your opponents are gonna see your plan coming a mile away so you gotta be mindful of when to use that kate cage brawler is a one one human warrior that has gruel in the cost and as long as it's your turn it has indestructible whenever it attacks you and the defending player each draw a card then discard a card so each rummage and then put two plus one plus one counter on kate if you discard the card with the highest mana volume of those cards type for highest or type for highest so that's funny I really like this idea. This is very flavorful. I can see that. And the fact that it's, uh, well, yeah, you know, indestructible, that makes it insanely good in this deck. I wouldn't usually want to give an opponent so much advantage because an extra draw, but at the same time, you're gonna be able to use this draw much better. And um, yeah, I believe that it's, it's definitely worth to keep this in this deck. Then we have Cass hand of vengeance and it's a 4-3 human ranger that costs four with boros it's a legendary creature has vigilance whenever it or another creature you control dies if it was enchanted or equipped return any number of our cards that were attached to it from the graveyard to the battlefield attached to another creature or uh, to target creature then attach any number of equipment it's the same very 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 good i like it and it's for 
it or another creature, so it's board wide, and that's gonna make your deck so strong if this is in play. You need to defend this with your life. Next, we have inventory management. It costs just boars, and it's instant, and it's split second, meaning that for as long as this spell is on the stack, no other spells or activated abilities that are mana abilities can be cast, and for each or an equipment you control, you may attach it to the creature you control. Um, that to a creature so that's again another quick way to hey i have huge like for example this one all right it's almost perfect for example have it in play it costs a lot but you know what i'm just gonna play it and now i have a base 910 creature so that's gonna be insane um yeah i like it i like it very much it's not a removal but you you definitely can use that and i you, i think you should keep then we have more brown guide author and it's a two three human citizen it costs three when it enters the battlefield you create a colorless equipment act artifact token name wasteland survival guide with equipped creature gets plus one plus one for each quest counter among permanents you control which you have another one for quest counters it's it's the duchess if i'm not mistaken and equip uh, for one generic okay so and then whenever you attack you put a quest counter on a target no one permanent control so more of the same of the quest counter it is an equipment this time so i wouldn't put it this way and if you keep this then i would say yeah why not keep that as well then we get three dog galaxy news dj it's a one five human bar that costs three with boards and it costs when you attack you may pay two generic and sacrifice an aura attached to three dog and when you sacrifice Sacrifice an aura this way for each other attacking creature you control, and you create a token that's a copy of that aura attached to that creature. Okay. So that's not bad. You can basically move. Uh, if you pay two, you can copy, you sack one uh, aura. Is it enchantment aura only, or is it equipment? Yeah, it's only for aura. So it's just for auras. You get to copy the aura from him. Basically, you remove it from him and you give it to every other attacking creature. Very, very strong. I like it. And yeah, it's not a bad thing. You put it on him. He's a 1 5, so it's I'm highly unlikely to die, especially if he has more than one good enchantment. Mr. Gutsy is a 1 1 robot soldier. It costs 2 generic. Whenever he casts an aura or equipment, he's an artifact creature. Spell, you put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Mr. Gutsy. And whenever he dies, you create an X junk tokens where X is number of plus one plus one counter so this just grows significantly high depending upon your aura and equipment why not it synergizes it's not bad there are better ones but i think it's pretty good in this deck depending on what cards you might want to swap in and out it might be up maybe to remove tip boy 3000 okay all right that's uh, one generic artifact equipment this is the first time we actually see the pip boy and whenever an equip a creature attacks choose one either draw a card and discard a card to sort the inventory or pick a perk which is put a plus one plus one counter on that creature and then check map which uh, gives you oh one tap two target lands that's very good i actually really like this it's situational so depending on whatever you want it can really be good it's not an enchantment so it's an artifact and it's more likely to stay in play and even if it does die you can bring it back and it really gives you a lot a lot of value this is going to be a great great low addition to any equipment deck i've received so that is definitely a then we have junk down okay and uh, one generator to tap it and then uh, for five which is red and tap is sacrifice so you create three junk tokens again can you do a lot with the junk so far not really but if you can then keep it i would think that mostly this deck doesn't care too much about the junk tokens and it's more about the equipment and your but as usual tend to go both ways sometimes okay then we have this divide oh we see the mantle of the ancients which is the great card that we saw the other day Enchantment aura, enchantment creature you control, and when it enters battlefield, return any number of target aura and or equipment cards that could be attached to enchanted creature from greater to a battlefield attached to the enchanted creature. So that's very, very good. It's a magnet for all auras and equipments. And yeah, again, and yet another one. And because you're you're milling those things, this is gonna be so good. So good, so good, so good. Just keep it, keep it, keep it. Pure steel paladins, a two-two human knight that costs double white. Whenever an equipment enters the battlefield that you control, you may draw a card. And then for metal craft, the equipment you control, you have equipped zero as long as you control three or more artifacts. That's going to be really good. Of course, this is the normal pure steel paladin. We know this. It has been strong in many, many formats. And of course, in a deck like this, it really shines. Then we get single combat and it costs five sorcery. 
That's white. Each player chooses a creature or planeswalker they control, and then sacrifices the rest. Players can't cast creatures or planeswalker spells until the end of your next turn. Very nice way to board wipe. And um, it's it's a singular board wipe. I'd rather have a Wrath of God myself <laughs> compared to this. But it's it's I understand what you're trying to do, which is give the chance of everybody to keep one, one creature. I would rather swap it for a whole war board wipe or a more targeted wipe overall like farewell oh dear steer command net blast must act another way to board wipe with a red again if you have better because of its um abilities it might be best you to remove it with and replace it with the targeted ones then we have chaos warp of course <laughs> the owner of target permanent shuffles into the library i don't like this it's okay it's very random i don't like the abilities of giving my opponent the ability to well just get something better uh, because that's what it is sometimes and then if, same for you you don't know what you're gonna get if you're gonna just return um, the creature back into a library heroic intervention wow very very good uh, always always very good and the green splash so yep absolutely keep bezelous colors of one generic artifact equipment 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 for two and a creep creature has that touch and lifeling not bad not too expensive and again you're gonna be able to do this fairly quickly the equipment part blood forge battle axe i wonder if they're gonna see any of the swords here cost one generic it's an artifact equipment and equip creature gets plus two plus zero and equips for two and whenever a quick creature deals combat damage to a player you create a token that's a copy of blood forge battle axe and effectively that's actually replicating itself as long as you deal damage to a player it's too bad it doesn't have trample but then it will be op i understand it's not bad there's better but it's pretty pretty good because you just keep having more and more battle axes so yeah not bad at all and but as i said if you have better equipment you swap it up champion's helm is an artifact equipment cost three generic and equips for one generic a quick creature gets plus two plus two as long as a quick creature is legendary it also has hex proof that's not bad at all as usual if it's a legendary creature especially your commander that's a way to protect it then we get the masterwork of ingenuity which we saw earlier which is a good and it copies any equipment in the battlefield so if you have really really good one just for one you can basically copy it and then canopy vista of course oh cinder glade nice to see your return just like the cliff top retreat and as i said with the other decks unfortunately oh ribbon crack most of the lands they've gone backwards a little bit they still don't have a great great value of the lands they do have these check lands but other than that meh oh scavenger ground okay it's a desert and tap to add one generic and for two and second exile all graveyards um don't really see the point i understand that maybe this is more if you're playing against you know what decks you're playing against so if you were playing against the mutant menace you are getting advantage they're getting advantage so at one point when they're going to do something really bad so long as you can uh, do it before they do it this is nice but otherwise it's so situational i don't know that i would would, would keep that so we'll go on some petal growth of course temple of abandoned and the different temples are kind of useless now okay we have the crimson caravaner uh, or caravaneer uh, so one, two, human scout, it costs three, it's red, double strike and trample, it never deals damage to a player, you create a junk token, again, this is not bad, I would say I would put it in the middle because of the junk, but it's definitely a target that you absolutely want to have here, and I would definitely keep it no matter what, because even though it doesn't synergize necessarily directly with dog meat, it synergizes with auras and equipments and double strike and trample that is insanely good next we have yen the reckless is a 2-1 human warrior that costs two it's red whenever it attacks if it's modified you may have a deal damage to equal to power to a you and any target nope not me and any target thank you very much yes it synergizes with equipments but no 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 that's that's gonna be uh problematic really quickly uh big horn rancher is a two five human ranger it costs five and it's green and vigilance tap add an amount of green equal to the greatest power among creatures you control very very nice especially in uh, this kind of deck and then you sack it to gain life equal to the greatest toughness among other creatures you control so that is actually not a bad card does it synergize with the commander no but it synergizes with the theme of the deck so um yeah let's let's put this one here more so 
and then Crimson Stone kind of run. I guess I could put them there um, like that, as these don't synergize so much, um, but they do, you know? Uh, these synergize more, so I think these would be more on the left. Next, we have Breakdown. So this is an instant, it costs three, it's green. Destroy target artifact and enchantment and create a junk token. Okay, so um, some spot removal for artifact or um, enchantments. There are better spot removals in these colors. I would rather remove permanents, but it's good that they give you something. Got a conscript. There's a 2-2 human mercenary that costs two, it's green, has trample whenever, uh, and it gets plus one, plus one for each or an attachment to it. Uh, equipment attached to it, which is really, really good. And when it dies, if it was enchanted, you could get to create a junk food token, a uh, junk token. And whenever it dies, if it was equipped, you also create a junk token. So it just overall is buffed and leaves behind a value dependent on the equipment and auras. So definitely something worth keeping. Then we get Super Mutant Scavenger. It's a 5-5 five, five mutant warrior that costs five is green. Trample, whenever it enters the battlefield or dies, return up to one target or equipment card from your graveyard to your hand. So it allows you to fetch something that you've uh, scrapped with dog meat. And on top of that, has trample and it costs only five so very very good in this kind of deck well rested is an aura enchantment it costs two it's green and enchants a creature and it has whenever whenever this creature becomes tapped put two plus one plus one counters on it then you gain two life and you draw a card this ability triggers only once each turn um that's okay it's a lot of value for uh, just being able to tap the creature not necessarily have to attack with it and um yeah i think this is a lot a lot of value you just out of one thing and so i like it agility bubble head is a three generic artifact and of course the first three parts are the same but the ability the second one is up to x target creatures you control gain haste until the end of the turn and can't be blocked this turn except by creatures with haste where x is the number of bubble heads you control as you activate this ability this could be on the on the okay side to keep because there are some creatures that care about dealing damage to your uh, opponents directly but there are the decks in, in these pre-cons that care about it more than this one necessarily. Then we have the perception one which says, look at the top X cards of your library, where X is the number of bubble heads, and you may cast a spell with mana value three or less from on them. Without paying a mana cost, put the rest at the bottom of your library in a random order. Again, because you don't know what's on top of your library and you're not playing that game, it's kind of pointless. Silver Shroud Costume is an equipment that costs two generic, has flash when it enters the battlefield, attach it to target creature control deck, here creature get get shroud until the end of turn and means that it can't be a target of spells or abilities that means yours as well this is not hexproof and a quick creature can't be blocked and it has three generics so shroud this is the shroud that i was referring to and uh, with uh, the previous deck so this is very good again um i prefer this over the agility bubble head because it allows you to go under the defenses definitely all that glitters of course makes a return very very nice one i really like it and it's really really strong uh, especially in this deck path to exile of course very nice spot removal so i really like that one Valor Stance is an instant. You tap two, choose one. Target creature gains indestructible at the end of turn, or destroy target creature with toughness for greater. And it's it's okay, but there are better spot removals and protection. I would rather go for something that allows me to remove a bit more. And we'll get to it at the end. But if there are no ways to protect your creatures, I would put a couple of those ones in the game in this color combinations because you definitely have more than just a heroic intervention. And we have Sticky Fingers. <laughs> <laughs> I love the photo. This uh, this image is really, really fun. So it's an aura. It costs one red and enchants a creature. And it gives it uh, whenever this creature ha deals combat damage to a player. You create a treasure token and it has menace. So it allows you to do that much easier. And whenever it dies, you draw a card. It's a nice little aura. Of course, the auras, you know, it all depends on the qualities of the auras that you have. If at home, because you've gotten some, there's been a lot of aura pre decks. So if you got a lot of those, you can swap this one in. Uh, this one out for those one in. Uh, it's very much dependent upon 
your your value proposition on what you have already at home but otherwise that's not a bad one to keep if you don't have anything else a button growth very good one and whenever it enters the battlefield and chance to land it, it draws you a card and the land has tap to add one amount of any color and it still counts as you know and any enchantment are in play for those cards that care about that fair toll ground another one and whenever it enchants the land uh, the land is tapped for mana it adds an additional one mana of any color so that's always decent and of course because you're playing three colors it's good to have these two because of the you know our enchantment matters and we have rancor wow i haven't seen rancor in forever i remember it was in alliances if i'm not mistaken that uh, was first printed and uh yeah this was a great 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 enchantment back in the day so yep this enchantment aura is green and it chants a creature it gets plus two plus zero and trample and when it is put into graveyard it is put back into the owner's hand so yeah very very good because if you mill it with dog meat it comes back into your hand and it just stays there and gives a trample as well uh, yeah it's still op squirrel's nest of course that's an aura that allows you to create squirrel tokens and i don't necessarily say that you should keep this one but it's good in a squirrel's deck for sure wild growth of course this allows you to get an additional green if you tap a land that is enchanted i would be cautious here i would put more for creatures now um it's good to ramp but it's more it's better to mana fix and i would rather put a triumph for example over a wild crow and keep the other ones the other two behemoth sledge is an equipment artifact that has a celeste and it costs three and a creature gets plus two plus two trample and lifelink so that's very strong as usual if you have better and place it with better but otherwise that's no bad at all then we get another cane signet oh brass knuckles giving a double strike to an equipped creature of course that's not bad actually especially because if you don't pay the five cost but you can do that by you know hey it's in the graveyard hey it's attached to to this by only paying you know two then it's definitely worth it explorer scope so whenever a creature attacks look at the top card your library fits a little line card you may put it into battlefield tam um this is a good way to ramp this is uh it's an interesting way to wrap for sure i like that it gives you the choice and it gives you also the view of the top deck it's maybe you know not as good as this the sense is divine top so it's not as strong as that one but because it's an equipment and synergizes with the deck i would definitely keep it and allows you to ramp then we have fire shrieker equipped creature has double strike okay so yet another one i wouldn't use both uh because yeah there's no point is they use brass knuckle or fire shrieker and um you can definitely copy brass knuckle so i would rather keep that in case you need to cast it um but that's it and then you saw ring swiftfoot boots of course it's a classic then you asher barons very ruined command tower evolving ones jungle shrine path of ancestry a royal side rarely query which allows it to sack a draw card if you control an artifact draw a card if you control an enchantment allowing you to basically draw two cards for two generic and sacking it not a bad one rocks passageway i like this one a lot especially if creatures um that deal damage to a player manners and there are more fans and temple of the false god so yeah uh, then we have the mountains which is only four then we have the forest which is only four and then planes which is also four so what do we think of the deck i think it is a quite an interesting interesting deck it's a very fun way of doing the spin of equipment and um enchantments that has been a th recurring theme in pre-con decks for quite a few years now i like the spin of it i think it's fairly fun and and on top of that as apart from the, the last part the last part just kind of disconnected a little bit i think it's not a bad bad deck overall it has a lot of synergy with the commander it is a bit lacking in a couple of parts i think their equipments are not the greatest and the enchantments as well the auras they're not all the greatest and there are some that are not even expensive commons and, and uncommons that they could have put in that they didn't put in but you know i think they had to add in themselves um but it wouldn't be too hard of a thing to edit yourself and add and change and remove to make this 
a stronger deck, unlike a reanimator deck or other decks where you have to spend an amount of money that's fairly significant. Therefore, I think it's not too bad. Now, what is it lacking in? I think there's a bit more interaction to be had with the graveyard. There are more and better um, sorceries out there and cards that allow you to put enchantments and or you know equipment from the graveyard attached to or back in play so that's really really good well at least to hand and i would put a bit more of those a bit more target removal as well wouldn't hurt at all and of course there's also the fact that you're looking at this deck and thinking okay i have all these creatures on play now how do i protect them against the board wipe or specific things so having a bit more of those you know teferis protection or um i don't remember the one that they introduced with a fractional would be one but you know the ones that are board protections uh or everyone led that was in the Doctor Who that would definitely help in this color combination because after all if you have no ways of bringing back your creatures because you don't you can bring back your auras but you don't really have ways to bring back your creatures then you're going to be screwed out of play and that's about it I think that's it you don't really need a huge amount of ramping here that is the truth so you got to be careful with that if, if you play the way that I said initially which is go low on the ground get a lot of good value with the low enchantments and equipments and that allows you to stack up really quickly and just clear the board very 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 quickly and people will underestimate you as well um but other than that i think it's not a bad deck i think i'm stuck between a 6.5 and a 7 here and i think i'm gonna go with a 6.5 namely because it's missing some of those cards that are synergistic with the enchantments and ores that we've seen in previous decks that allow you to draw that allow you to do things that you wouldn't necessarily need you know they have no real draw yes you, i get i get i understand the fact that dog bean has the junk ability and if you want to just use that then you have a lot of draw but that's not really drawing it's exiling and you don't really get to choose what to do with a card because you have a turn to play it and if it's not a card that you can play this turn well then you're screwed so that's that's the main reason why also you know excelling from top of your library and just playing off of that sucks um other than that yeah so i, I think i was sick with that let me know in the comments down below if you agree if you don't agree if you would have made some other changes or you would have cast some of the other cards uh, we look and reply to every single one of your comments and if you like this video make sure to thumbs up and subscribe to the channel as it does help small channels like ours a lot and if you're in the uk and are looking to buy and sell your very own fallout cards well uh check the link down in the description below very friendly sharks the code uk that's where we are at and other than that it's from scar and i thank you very much and next we'll be unboxing the collector's booster box so we're done with the commander decks overall the decks are very good and i'm pretty happy with this and uh, yeah we hope to see you in the next one until then we wish you a lovely day a blessed day be good be kind and we'll see you in the next bye